Today, we're going to walk you through an actual migration of one of our customers, Windows 2016 servers, off of ESXi and on to Proxmox. And this particular process we did in lab first to make sure it worked was fraught with troubles and peril and driver issues. And we're going to walk you through how we resolve all of that step by step and some of some really interesting stuff that I learned that I actually haven't had to do before and got it to work. So you can want to stick around to see this whole thing coming up next. Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by CyberVenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. All right, so this is my client. Now, this is a real actual live client. You're watching me work here, folks. So there's going to be a lot blurred and missing out of here because, well, you know, confidentiality. <clears throat> so I apologize for the extra blurring, but obviously I don't want to display too much of my customer stuff. So this is the new server that um, we built for them, the new Proxmox 8, and they have an ESXi 7 server over here. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to go to the data center up here and go to our storage and then you'll see that we already added our new server. So if you go to add and you go to ESXi, all you got to do is you make the, this is the, whatever name you want it to be. This is the IP address of the ESXi server, root and whatever the password is. And then you generally want to skip your certificate verification because it's probably, you know, a self-signed certificate. And you add it and here we go. <clears throat> and when you do that, you can go down here. This appears under any of the hosts. They all have that server there now and if you click on it you can see your guests and you click on a guest and you click import now in this case I can't do that right now because this guest is still running so we're gonna go over here and shut this puppy down okay that's off so now we go over here and we can now import our server there so import let, let pick whatever number it wants how many sockets we got, how many cores, blah, 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 how much RAM. That all looks pretty good. Um, we're going to go next here. Advanced, advance, I should say. And I'm going to make my SCSI controller to be vert IO SCSI. That's an important one because that's the, the driver that we have. It's easy to find. <clears throat> also, in my case on the network, I have a different VLAN now for that particular box. So I'm going to put that in there and go ahead and run import. And then the screen kicks off and starts running. I'm going to pause the video here because this will take a while. About every 10 or 15 seconds, it updates with another gig or so of progress. I got a little 90 gig hard drive to do. This would take me about 10 or 15 minutes normally. Okay, that just finished up. One other thing to note before you do the import, you should make sure that your source serve, uh, has no open snapshots or any unconsolidated disks. You want to make sure you, you get that done. Because um, otherwise this can fail or, or certainly slow down at the very minimum. Um, so we can close that out. So now you'll see over here we have 109 because I had to redo it. Uh, I had some open snapshots and some unconsolidated disks and kind of got stuck. So I'll clean that up later. But uh, do that first and <laughs> we'll have less cleanup. So here we are. We have our virtual machine that has been cloned over. But what we want to do is now is we want to add a second. Why well, no, we don't need that second? We, we can boot here. So we're going to edit our... DVD drive here, and we want to make sure that we have our vert IO driver disk. There it is, All right? Um, no, I'm, I'm t I changed my mind. <laughs> so we we're going to add a second CD-ROM because we need we need to boot off of Windows 2016. Here's our 2016 ISO, and there's our there is our SATA zero, which is our IO, and we're going to go ahead and launch this puppy. Okay, so if you go ahead and run it right away, you're going to get this. It looks all scary, and it would be. Uh, inaccessible boot device. If you've seen this, we're going to walk you through how to fix that. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to escape to my boot menu here. Ah, that was too slow. Yep, got the gun. We're going to catch this and we're going to get in. All right, so now we're going to boot off of our 2016 OS. There's our boot menu here. Punch number three. And now we're, we're launching up a good old-fashioned Windows 2016 install CD. That's all this is. Okay, so we get here. 
We're going to hit next, and then we have our repair your computer. We're going to troubleshoot, get to our command prompt, and here we go. Now we need to load the driver. So first things first, we're going to go find our driver, which I believe is the D drive. Uh, no, that looks like our Windows CD. It's not C, is it? No. E. That's our E drive. Okay. So the AMD 64 folder is our SCSI drive driver. And then we'll see. There's 2K16 because this is 2016, right? Find the appropriate spot. And here are our, our drivers. So what we're going to do is DRV load space and VL SCSI. Well, actually, you know, before I do that, I'm going to prove something. So if we launch disk part and I want to list my disks, it'll yell at us that there's no driver. Again, we're, we're right now running as the install environment. The install environment has no driver. No fixed disks. Okay, so we're going to exit that. And now we're going to do DRV load and VAO SCSI.inf. And there, so now it's loaded. So now if I go to disk part and list disk, it finds it. Look at that. So we're going to try and make find out what drive we're at. F was it last time? Oh, look at that. There's my Windows install. Okay, so what we could do is we can DSM. All right, so image, that's the where the Windows folder's at. Notice we don't put F Windows. You just leave it F. Add driver, and then this is the path to our driver, our driver CD. And then recurse means it's going to dig through every freaking driver we have and stick it in that operating system because why not do that now? And here we go. Here it runs. Eight when I forget have typos. Okay. There we go. Fix that. Colon E down backslash. So there we go. And it says, if you notice, all of these say it was successfully installed, but uh, that didn't work last time. We'll demonstrate that next. So now that it's good, we're going to try rebooting and seeing if it comes up. It should, but it won't. And you see, this is not what we want to see. It's still not seeing it. That's because the driver's not there. So if you hit yes, it's still going to get you right back to here. So we're going to reboot and go back into the command line. I'll show you what else I had to do. Okay, so here's the thing. So we're back up now. Now we're going to figure out what the heck happened. And what we do is going to try and manually copy stuff. And we're going to play with the registry. So we copy all of our INF files to the C Windows INF directory. And just make sure you don't brainlessly put C. Uh, C is what it really is, but right now it's F. There we go, so copy files. And now we also have to copy the sys files over. So copy all that sys. And that's gonna go, it's going to F Windows System 32 drivers. See, it, it, it's got one there, which is interesting. So I'm going to tell it no. So it looks like I copied the drivers, but not the INF files. Now, the next thing we're going to do is some little bit of reg editing. How do you reg edit from here? Well, or easily. First, we're going to reg. And we're going to load HKLM. And we'll call it offline. And then we're going to put the path. All right, now we hit enter. So that's basically loading our registry into memory. And then we can uh, reg edit. And if we go to our HK local machine, we now have this offline key that we created by loading. We go to our current control set one. And then uh, and then services. And then we're looking for our driver. And we have to vert IO. 
Just go way down here. Uh, where is V? There you go, Vert Scuzzy. This is this is our driver here. So we've got oh, that's nice. Okay, we got start, and we've got type, and we've got group SCSI mini port. These are the three things we need here. Reg SC. I had to create this manually in my last image. I don't know why it's here now. Maybe maybe my DSM worked better for some reason. I don't know. Start should be zero, and then type should be one. This is basically telling it what level the driver needs to be run at. Um, there's also Vert Store. Yeah, it's got that set up as well. Okay, so that actually does look good. So maybe just copying the this files are all okay. We have to do this time for some reason. But if they're not there, then you're going to have to create them manually. Um, create that, that, and that. Mindful of the type. Reg D word, Reg D word. So if you want to Reg D word, it's just. Uh, here you'll see D word 32, and then string value for the group. And this have SCSI mini port happens to be what the vert IO driver is. So it looks like well, it looks pretty good. So let's give it a reboot and see what happens. It's rebooting again for some reason. Okay, and there we are. She booted up cleanly. So this time it looked like I just needed to copy the sys file over. Uh, last time I had to do registry in my lab, which is interesting that it's different because it's the exact same system. <laughs> there we go. We got our, uh, our desktop back, and we're up and running. Okay, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You saw that we were able to use DISM to apply drivers, kind of. We saw the problems that we had with that and how to manually fix that by editing the registry. It's like a couple key interesting things is to remember that you have to boot off of a compatible operating system. So if we saw that, well, we didn't demonstrate, but I've also used Windows 11-based Hiren's boot disk to try and do DISM and apply drivers, and it gave me an error. Now, I just didn't bother wasting time showing that on the screen, but you can't do that. I had to end up using Windows 2016 install disks. From Windows 2016, I had to use DRV load to load the driver onto that environment so that I can then see the hard drive, so that I can load, use DISM to apply the driver there. And then I still had to manually edit the registry and copy some files over to get it all to work and come up cleanly. It's quite a long process, but if you know how to do it, you can help you in other recovery situations. Say if your server blew up and trying to store it back up to a new piece of hardware or disk failure, replace the hard disk and something else goes wrong. There's all kinds of scenarios where these techniques can come in handy. So that was really important to demonstrate it in the video. Hope it was all helpful to you, and uh, we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cybervenger.com.
And one last thing here that always gets me, you got to change the IP address because essentially the network card is a brand new network card. And if you go into the, the TCP IP properties, notice it's got sets of DHCP, but it has the gateway in here. It's, this, is, this is the trick. If I want to add my IP address, I want to put in my, uh, what the heck was it? I think that was it. Put a mask in. This wall always gets me. I hit OK. Remove the static IP from the app send adapter. See, because the app adapter's gone. Yes, I do. <sighs> yeah, okay. And then, but not, watch this. I go back in. Oh, sometimes the gateway's missing when you do that. You got to type the gateway in. Okay, it didn't, didn't do that. It's great. So, um, and now I have, since it's a DNS server, I'm all set. There we go. And that's all. That is the last final step.